So lateral facial bones look like that. So again, we've got the mandible inferiorly, and we'll talk about it in a different section. You got the maxilla, you got the zygom, uh, zygoma, zygomatic bone, got the nasal bones up front. Lacrimal bone is the dark green bone right there. Then the ethmoid bone uh, is that reddish appearing bone. So palatine bones are L-shaped, even though you don't see the L, they're L-shaped. Um, and they've got a vertical and a horizontal portion. Uh, the horizontal plate articulates with the maxilla to complete the posterior portion of the roof of the mouth. Uh, the, that's the bony hard palate. Uh, the vertical portion extends upward uh, between the maxilla and the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone in the posterior nasal cavity. Superior tips of the vertical plates assist in forming the posterior medial orbit. Uh, realistically, of all the projections, of all the facial bones, the palatine bones probably going to be uh, of least significance. So um, your turbinates, again, are your superior and inferior nasal conch, uh, conchi being plural. Uh, so I refer to them as the turbinates. They, um, again, we, we talked about what their purpose is, and it's just a, the scroll bones uh, behind the, the uh, in the, the nasal cavity itself. So that's what a conch shell is. Um, and you, you kind of see, you know, if you've paid attention to, to any of the images in the textbook or if you've taken any uh, facial bone x-rays, you can kind of see how they, they get that appearance or they, they draw that parallel between the two. All right, so the vomer is a thin plate of bone situated uh, in the mid-sagittal plane of the floor of the nasal cavity. And it forms the, the most inferior portion of the nasal septum. So it's continuous with perpendicular plate and the crista galli, uh, all the way at the, the top of the ethmoid bone. Um, so it's, it's just a, a portion of the bony nasal septum. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the orbits. <laughs> so the orbit uh, is composed of seven bones, and those are all the bones that make up the orbit. So looking at the, the diagram of the orbit, you can, and looking at the sutures um, that, that join the bones together, you can really kind of see, uh, it's a very complicated uh, structure. We've got a lot of different bones that go into it. So what, what we've got is the, the floor of the orbit here, lateral wall of the orbit over there, that's the zygoma, medial wall, these are actually the nasal bones over here. Um, the, the two, most common fractures of, of the, the orbit are uh, one that, that we'll talk about uh, here in a bit and, and the purpose for shooting a water's view is that if somebody takes a, a hit to the eye, um, the, the, the structure of the eye is really fluid. It's a very viscous fluid, but it's, it's a fluid and fluid does not compress. It's a basis for, for how hydraulics work. You force enough fluid into something and something else is gonna move. The, the fluid won't compress. So as you compress the eye, as the, the eye distorts whenever it gets mashed in, that fluid's gonna go somewhere. And most common place it's gonna go, you would think would be the lacrimal bone, but it's not gonna break the lacrimal bone nearly as often as what it's gonna uh, break the, uh, the, the floor of the orbit probably through the maxilla. So it's gonna uh, blow out the floor of the orbit, and that's what we call a blowout fracture because it blows out the floor of the orbit. The other fracture is what we call a tripod fracture, and that's whenever somebody gets hit really hard in the cheekbone itself, and the cheekbone disarticulates with the frontal bone in the maxilla. So it's, it's this bone here is basically free floating and that's a tripod fracture, two most common fractures of, of the orbit itself. Um, just backing up, the, the apex of the orbit, um, the, it's cone-shaped. The apex of the orbit is posterior and medial, and that'll play a part, and you'll understand why I point that out uh, here in a bit. 
All right, so procedures. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do lateral. This is just facial bones, it's not orbits. Uh, lateral of facial bones, uh, a waters method, and that's really the waters is the only thing that we're going to add to this particular lecture. Um, the um, everything else we we covered in in cranial bones. So we got the lateral, we got the parietal acanthal projection, which is a waters method. We got a cantho parietal projection, which is really the reverse waters, and then we got the PA, which is uh, the same call well that we saw before, PA axial. So lateral facial bones, we're going to position just like what we uh, how we positioned before for the facial bones, and that was to extend the chin enough to put the infraorbital meatal line perpendicular to the uh, front of the image receptor, parallel with the long axis of the, the image receptor. Again, that's just for uniformity, so the radiologist doesn't have to look at one set of facial bones looking like this, next set of facial bones looking like that, next set of facial bones looking like so. So that's just uniformity. Uh, the most important things, though, are to get the interpupillary line perpendicular to the image receptor. That's going to determine whether or not you've got rotation, and it's also going to determine whether or not you've got hip, uh, head tilt. Remembering that what we're going to look for to determine rotation and tilt is really the mandible. So that if, if you see, uh, because of the, the way the data projector is, is shining, um, this has got to be a, at some degree of an angulation. If I put it way up here, maybe not, but uh, where it's comfortable for me to show, just imagine that this is, you know, sitting like that. I want you to look at the shadow. So if you've got any kind of rotation, what you're going to see is the big condyle is, is going to be your, uh, the side, well, the big condyle should be the side that's furthest away from the image receptor. So what you've got is rotation with the face towards the image receptor is going to take the upside condyle and it's going to put it too close to the image receptor. And if you've got uh, opposite rotation, it's going to be behind. So if you've got head tilt, what you're going to have is separation vertically, so that the, the larger, the more magnified condyle is going to be uh, projected superior to the, the side that's uh, not as magnified. So interpupillary line uh, perpendicularity is the most important thing. The uh, extending of the chin is just for, for uniformity. So what you're going to be looking for are the same things that you've, you looked at before. And that is um, rotation of cell turcica. You're going to be looking at the, uh, the orbital roofs and making sure that they're on top of each other. Your central ray in this case, though, is going to be a little bit more anterior. You don't need to see the entire skull. So what we're going to look at, or where we're going to put the, the uh, central ray, son of a gun.